Bring the stream. Recording. All right, let me go to Facebook. Hello, YouTube we'll people. Hello, Facebook people. Let's make sure we're streaming. Just doing a little tech check here. Not seeing it yet. There it is. There we are. Hot oh, dang. Let's mute that. Share. Let me go share. Yeah, that is me. Okay. It's Sunday night. Do you know where your Technorama is? <laughs> right there. Under Technorama podcast. Oh, by the way, I updated our image on our Patreon. Actually, you and I need to go sit down and comb through our Patreon and make sure we're happy with the way it looks and... You update the image, it's no longer the Peanuts characters ones? No, it is, but they changed the format of the site just a little bit, so the images oh, are you did. cut off. So yes. I fixed it. Nice. Okay. But I I want to change I'm I'm actually thinking of changing that up anyway. So uh All right. Good. And we have a new Patreon member, I noticed. Uh, he came Ooh. in a couple weeks ago. We missed him. Oop. He's in the lineup this week. I found the easy way to do well, that so is you look at all members and you look at who paid least. <laughs> if they only have like zero or one or two dollars, they're new. It'll be a lesson to you kids when you come in. It'll just, tell uh, you. It'll tell you. Every... Tell you when they joined too. So that was my clue. It was like, hey, we got something new. Yeah. So listen for that when we get to that point in the show. Very appreciative. And Donna made a, a bill of materials that I owe for for the last three years. <laughs> oh. Mm. She's going to steal all her money. <laughs> Way to go, Donna. All right. I don't think it's complete. She says it's not complete. It's the only, actually, we could, we could afford pretty much everything going back to when we got the iMac. <laughs> everything I gave you, I didn't give you anything. Oh, she didn't give us everything. Well, boys and girls, this is the last episode we ever do. It's we're nice gonna need more. <laughs> we're gonna need more patrons. Yeah, can't afford this place. All right. All right. Well, fortunately, podcasting is popular, and we seem to be doing all right riding that coattail. John Miller Jr. Well, has no, joined. No, we're wearing the coat. My They're coat on our coattail. <laughs> we're wearing the coat. We borrowed the <laughs> coat from Goodwill. We couldn't, they're, couldn't afford any. They're coat. on our coattails, buddy. I'm bring your volume up just a little bit. Check, check, check. All right. Let's see. Let me line this up. And Alphonic so makes it sound all nice, too. It does, actually. I think Alphonic does a great job. It does a fine job. You're still using it for your stuff, right? I'm using it for any time I'm not at the studio. So I've been doing more studio because I started looking at my budget. It gives you two hours of free a month. Mm -hmm. And... Dog days usually takes a little more than two hours, so I've been doing some of it at the studio okay. to kind of conserve that. And then when I'm on the road or something, then I'll I'll use the phone. So hmm. it's okay. now the 18th. We're going to record our dog days after this is done too, or or my dog okay. days. You're going to join me again. Okay. And it's it's the 18th, and I've used less than an hour. I think about 30 minutes of my two hours. So still doing pretty good. Let's okay. see. I use. I think it's totally amazing. What? Let me see. Alphonic. The, yeah, that I'm not. That I'm. Let's see. One hour twenty six remaining for this month. I've got eight hours and seventeen. Oh wait. Min or Total seven audio processing. Oh, available audio processing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm a little over twenty five percent of the way through my budget, but we're over fifty percent of the way through the month. So, I'm yeah. budgeting pretty well this month. Well, for me, I pay. You know, I pay for some hours for. Uh, Technorama, Topic is Trek. Well, we should be able to pay you back for that. That's part of our budget, man. What's that running you per month? Um, I think I paid ten bucks a month. Ten bucks a month. Hold on a second. You've been so, forking um, over one hundred and twenty bucks a year for this show. Yes. Out of the goodness we had, of we your heart. We talked about this. Maybe All we right. need to talk about this offline. <laughs> yeah, we we need to have a business meeting. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm gonna take one for the team. So no, I'm uh, yeah, it's like eleven bucks for nine hours for a year uh for a month and we we come close to that um, okay we should be able to you know, we should be able to course, absorb some of that and of course dog days kind of goes through there but there's just not that much you okay know, so. well shall we begin now that everybody's heard our <laughs> and 
Uh, that that goes for the meeting. Michael says, I love my iMac Pro. I do, too. I love mine because work bought it for me for streaming. And you are watching this courtesy of the iMac Pro from work. Courtesy of ServiceNow. Because I do a live stream for them, too. All right. Let us begin, then. You ready? Um, Hold on. Now that we got our yes, viewers I am ready watching us, thank you, everybody, for joining. We will begin recording in five, four, three... Technorama episode 574 for August 21st, 2019. I forgot the title. And down the rabbit hole she goes. <laughs> there you go. You got it, in. Welcome to Technorama. This is the show that takes a light out to look at tech, science, sci-fi, and all things geek. If this is your first time joining us, thank you. Thank you very much. And if you are returning... Welcome back. We appreciate you giving us your time. My name is Chuck Tomasi from sunny Phoenix, Arizona, where it is August. It is hot, and it is tempting to go jump in the pool, except I got some... I went to the dermatologist, and they froze some stuff and scraped some stuff, so I'm in no condition to go in the pool. Joining me just across the screen right there is the one and only, the talent behind the show, Craig Stapp. How are you, Craig? Wow. Thank you for that cool introduction on a hot night. Actually, it's hot here, too. How um, hot is I, it? <laughs> it's so hot. I went running and I stuck to the road. I'm telling you, it was. It's... Wait, I got it for you. There it is. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad out here too. Um, I'm hoping in the next week. Actually, I've signed up for a race, a uh, foot race next next week. So, uh, use by both Saturday, feet. I it hope the better. humidity drops and the temperature drops. <laughs> it's a foot race. Use both feet. It works better. Oh, a, foot, a feet race. You know, I have I I have dreams like that every once in a while that one foot is working and one isn't, and I figured out why. Because I cross my feet in my sleep, and the foot that's not working is the one that's hooked behind the other one. <laughs> oh, I bet you're going to say it's like uh when you know when it's really hot, you know, some people they stick one leg out of under the comforter. Oh, no. <laughs> you ever do that? No. Oh, I do. I I stick one leg out of the under the comforter and sometimes I Anyway, and you can get the idea. This is Technorama. We're just going to talk about whatever <laughs> we're talking about. No, there is a show format in here, and we are going to get you some feedback from our question of the week from last week. So let's do the song. Letters. Oh, we got letters. Letters, letters. What's that? Oh, there you go. I love those letters. I was just thinking we need a feedback section in our webinar at work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'd have so much more fun now that we're doing cameras again. <coughs> hey, by the way, before you get started. Yes. Um, We got an email. Oh, we did. I don't have the show notes. Did we get All a right. voicemail? No. But Who's the email, email from, Craig? Uh, it's from To Go Express Courier Proposal. Oh, Hi, what are they? Sir or ma'am. We are from <laughs> To Go Express SM Urdenta, located in second level SM Urdenta, Urdenta City, uh, Agassian. Are you reading the Google transcript? No, I'm not. Uh, okay. uh, we are pleased to submit your proposal uh, for your proposal. No, I'm sorry. We are pleased to submit to you our proposal for your logistics service needs. Please see attached file for reference. It is a Word doc. I am not opening it. Click and here it and give us your credit card number. <laughs> yeah, you can see it. You can see it. it looks like a Word doc. I mean, the little preview. I'm not opening it, though. And then it says, uh, uh, follow up. Good day. Thank you for this. However, I checked the attached proposal, and it is intended for another person, not for the undersigned. Alan? No, oh, that's his. I'm not going to read his. Uh, <laughs> so somebody actually opened it. Um, but there's like, you know, hundred, a hundred people on, <laughs> on the CC. On the CC? Anyway. Yeah. And including us. So, well, maybe we'll get to, yeah. Reply all. <laughs> yeah. Not doing it. That was Donna's idea. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, so good security. I know somebody that opened our, it. That's that was our listener mail. We have 
our question of the week from last week was, what was that one toy you just couldn't do without when you were a child? And mm. we got lots and lots. Kyle Slingo says, I always wanted a Woody doll. Wow, he must be fairly young if he was a child during Toy Story days. Yeah. Uh, BJ Keeper I was just says, my, I was like, wait a minute, 95 is when it came out. My teddy bear Ken. Hey, 95 is now 24 years ago. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. The hell you say. Even if you were 35 <laughs> now, you were a kid 25 years ago. That's right. Yeah, true. We have Steve Asplund has a G.I. Joe with a Kung Fu grip. Joe Fiore says, I had a stuffed gonzo that I took everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> come on, Camilla. Actually, it looks like. Gonzo's wearing his wife beater t-shirt and underwear. And, and the cape he stole from Super Grover. <laughs> the laundry room. Yeah. He's tidy white. He's in his wife beater. <laughs> Poor Camilla. <laughs> Ken By the way, just... wife beating is not a laughing matter. Cam... <laughs> Ken Michaelie posted a, just an animated gif of Harrison Ford blow drying Chewbacca's hair. <laughs> which I thought was rather comical. Uh, April Stewart says, my Barbies. Brianna hmm. says, I have a beanie baby dog, which actually lives in Germany with me. Took him everywhere as a kid and I guess as an adult. Yeah, I remember when she was born because her dad was my best man in my wedding. <laughs> oh, speaking of feeling old. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I went back to Wisconsin this past week and, and crossed mm -hmm. paths with some of my old coworkers, you know, guys that I was working with as a... Uh, young to mid 20 something and uh you know now these guys are grandfathers <laughs> yeah, no. like, hey jay how's it going how are the kids oh he says i got one getting married next summer i said i got one who got married last week <laughs> yeah, like, yeah but i'm a grandpa it's like you win yeah. uh patty efforts also says barbie joel mclaughlin hot wheels ralph says transformers kiko says my go-kart built with a briggs and stratton gasoline lawnmower engine mm. always wanted a go-kart yeah, those were awesome. Uh, Tina Heikala says, my toy horses. More Legos for Mike Wills. Jeff Danu, my karate instructor, says, bazooka. <laughs> he had a toy bazooka. Wow. Gary Lindros, I understand. Maybe, maybe he's talking about the bubble gum. I understand you so much better knowing this fact. I don't know who he was replying to. Uh, Tim Zenglin says, H.O. Cars. Melissa Bartell, roller skates. Oh, you mm. know, I hadn't thought about that, but... As a teen, that was something I probably couldn't live without, as well as many of the other people that say, bicycle. Weber Baker yeah. has walkie-talkies in here. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I had an army men, and I had Lincoln Logs, and many hours spent building forts with both of those, even though they didn't technically look over there. <laughs> Evo Terra <laughs> says, a hash pipe. What kind of child's wow. toy was that? Wait a minute. How old was he? <laughs> 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 Tiffany Taylor says a Mrs. Beasley. Oh, mm, from that yeah, that was uh, from uh, Brady Bunch. Cindy had a Mrs. Beasley. Ice That's skates, right. bicycle, color forms. Remember color forms? That was kind of a yes, precursor to Barbie. It was a two-dimensional thing with the vinyl stick-ons that you put on it. You put the clothes on the people, but it was really just a sheet of yeah. paper and some vinyl stickers. But color forms, when I think of stuff like that, I think of the shrinky dinks. You know, used to put them in the oven. And shrinky they're... dinks is another good one. Yeah. You, you color them, and away they went. So what, okay, so what did you, not, or what could you not live without? It really depends on what era you're talking about. As a small child, I, I think it was probably the Legos and Army Men. As, as I got older, it was the bicycle and then probably turned into the roller skates as I got into my teenage years. Hmm. I remember uh, being very attached to my skateboard as I got a little older, but uh, bicycle would be way up to the top of that list. Um, but early on, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to embarrass myself a little bit. Along with Joe, um, I did not have Gonzo. But I had, when I was much smaller, I had a Winnie the Pooh about the same, looks like about the same size as that Gonzo. And I carried him everywhere. I, I, I love that thing. a number of stuffed animals. I, I remember teddy bears and a raccoon and you know, just, there was a, a little stuffed monkey with this goofy grin mm -hmm. on his face that I had for a long time. And I remember- Is it one of the little sock monkeys? No, 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 no. It, it, was, it was just like a little stuffed animal about three, four inches high. And I remember giving it to Julie and she would carry it by the tail. 
<laughs> and after a while, I just started smelling of rotten formula because <laughs> she, mm. she, yeah, I don't know how this how this thing survived. Mm. I don't know whatever happened yeah. to it, but I do have a couple of pictures of. Uh, oh. I called him Snowflake after one of the local characters in town who had a well, similar the, grin. The other thing, um, so beyond Winnie the Pooh, was uh, as I got a little older and started watching Star Trek, I had a lot of Mego action figures. Uh, with yeah. the Star Trek the Enterprise um, uh, bridge mock-up. It was like basically it was laminated cardboard, um, the bridge. And I had like a few other things like Spock's um, uh, commu- like communication the console. Tricorder? Oh, the, it's a console. Yeah. Yeah, it sits on the ground. It's really a, a walkie-talkie, but it's a console. It sits down and it had big buttons that said, had red alert, um, you know, and a transmit and stuff like that. And uh, so some of the Star Trek toys and then, of course, Star Wars. I had action figures and spaceships coming out my butt. I, I can't remember how old I was. I think it was uh, maybe 12, 13 uh, when I got the Radio Shack 150 in one kit. That was several years <laughs> oh, yeah. worth of entertainment and education. Yeah, that's a good one. That, so, was a, that is such a good uh, gift that... Um, I think everybody should have had one at some point. That yep. was a great project. Yep. Hey, did you ever know one of those kids could be in your neighborhood or maybe a friend that he maybe was a single uh, kid, uh, you know, uh, an only and ended up with like all the toys that you ever wanted to see. And I'm in a family of nine and I get like socks. <laughs> Here's hate- your super ball, Chuck. I hate those kids. <laughs> yeah. I remember. Well, Adam and I were, or our family was friends with another family. They had an only, and I swear it looked like we walked into, you know, Toys R Us. He had every, it's like, whoa, you had this. The, so a lot the of things that I get the go karts. <laughs> yeah, a lot of things I remember about putting my hands on, but they were all his, you know, all the, the really cool stuff. Yeah. And, the the, the yeah. video games. Every mm-hmm. year you get a new video console. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had a borrowed 2600. <laughs> Well, I, I tell you what, that's another thing I could not get enough of was that 2600. I wore that out. I think Can't tell me times I repaired the joystick. You know, <laughs> the white plastic inside. That's the reason our wrists and fingers are all messed up these days. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. I, I have a tariitis. <laughs> tariitis. Actually, that sounds like it could be a thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's see. Michael King says, my tiger tank. Oh, yeah. Mont- in the late 50s and 60s. Um, John Miller Jr. is 10 speed was awesome. Yep. Yeah, yep. I agree. Yeah. Lots of stuff. Right. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think I, other things that may have beeped, buzzed, or I know operation was fun. Someone else had, um, mm. perfection and superfection, you know, where you had to put all the shapes in the right square in the, in the right holes before it went kaboom. Superfection. I hadn't seen that yes. one. I think it was more and weirder shapes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rubik's cube. Was uh, oh, gosh, 1981, yeah. 82. There was, there was this era of just massive puzzles. Rubik's Cube, I think, started it. And by that following Christmas, there was uh, Rubik's Revenge. There was a cylindrical yeah. version. There was there Rubik's was, yeah, there Rings. There were a lot of other knockoffs, too. I, somehow I got two ver- two copies of Rubik's Rings, and I can't solve either one of them. Because it was, it was very fragile, held together with fish line. So I don't dare mm. touch them now because it's stuff's probably brittle enough. But I had uh, one that was like a it, what it didn't it, what I don't think it had the name Rubik in it, but it was a was a, a something snake, and it you could fold it, and if you did it right, you could get it into a tri, uh, pyramid shape. And so <laughs> oh, I, would, yes, I got to where I, I could do that, that. really fast. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that was about the same era. <laughs> Lots yeah, of puzzle so. toys. Yeah, there were lots of different variations on the Rubik's Cube, uh, you know, pyramids, circles, or, or spheres, rather. There was all kinds of stuff. Yeah, the the cylindrical one was more or less uh, a version of the sliding tiles, you know, where you have the 4x4 the four four grid, mm-hmm. and the, but it was cylindrical, so you could, you know, rotate the rings and slide things back and forth. I did have um, one of those 4x4 four four sliding tiles, you know, where you have 15 and there's an empty space and you slide them up. It was a Miller yeah. Light logo because we went to the <laughs> we went to the Miller Brewery in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, one day, and and oh. that was what I picked out out of the souvenir shop. 
a That's light funny. Pilsner beer or <laughs> a fine Pilsner beer is what it said. All right. That's filling. Tastes great. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, that's it for our feedback. We will have another question for you at the end of the show. Let's do the history thing now that we're. Wait, do we way... have a question in the, the show? Let me look. Do we? Yep, you you better work on one. Show. Okay. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> on this day in history for August 21st, 2019, this is the 233rd day of the year in the Gregorian calendar. There are 132 days remaining in 2019. It was on this date in 1770 that James Cook formally claims Eastern Australia for Great Britain, naming it New South Wales. Oh, let me go back to the show notes. And 198 years ago today, Jarvis, what? Oh, Jarvis Island is discovered by the crew of the ship Eliza Francis. That same date in 1883, an F5 tornado struck Rochester, Minnesota, leading to the creation of the Mayo Clinic. And let's see. Uh, I was trying to chat and read this at the same time. Uh, also focus, in, Craig. Focus. I know. I can multitask. Uh, also today in wait a minute. Yeah, that's the next 1888. one. Also today in 1988, the first successful adding machine in the United States is patented by William Seward Burroughs. Adding Which machine Burroughs. by we Burroughs. Saw his name everywhere. Yes, it was on that same date in 1897 that Oldsmobile. That good old American automobile manufacturer and mark is founded. And let me go back one more time. Uh, focus, to, Craig. Focus. focus. I'm trying to entertain our listeners. Wait till the end of this segment. <laughs> okay, fine. 108 years ago today, the Mona Lisa was stolen by uh, Vincio. Vincenzo. Vincenzo. <laughs> Rugia. <laughs> From. Um, Oh, the Louvre. Emplo- a Louvre employee. Oh, I'm sorry. That same date in 1945, physicist Harry Daglian is fatally irradiated in a criticality accident during an explosion, excuse me, an experiment uh, with the Demon Corps in Los Alamos National Laboratory. Ouch. And it was uh, 62 years ago today, the, the Soviet Union successfully conducts a long range test flight of the R 7 Semyorka. Uh, the first intercontinental ballistic missile. August 21st, 1961, Motown releases what would be the first number one hit in America, Please, Please Mr. Postman, Mr. Postman. Yeah. by the Marvelettes, <laughs> and they weren't referring to that REST API test application. Yeah, Marvelettes is like, uh, you know... Anyway, you the, know you're from the are. MCU, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're the cheerleaders for the Mar- MCU. <laughs> Go it was also- Quill! <laughs> <laughs> it was also on this date in 1993 that NASA loses contact with the Mars Observer spacecraft. Thanos, Thanos, he's our man. <laughs> <laughs> he can't do it. No one can. <laughs> He'll snap yeah. you back again. And also, August 21st, 2017. Wow, it's been two years since the solar eclipse traversed the continental United States. Wow. Time flies yeah. when you're having fun. Happy birthday goes out in this day too. French mathematician and engineer Hubert Gautier. Gautier, born on this date in 1660. Yeah, we'll go with yours. (laughs) And Giacomo. Giacomo. Huh? Giacomo. Giacomo? Whatever. (laughs) F. Mardali. Maraldi. 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 (laughs) Can you stop it? You're messing me up. I'm helping. French Italian astronomer and mathematician was born on that same date in 1665. Scottish engineer and inventor created gas lighting. William Murdoch was born 265 years ago today, donkey. <laughs> and Jean Stas, uh, the Belgian chemist and physician, was born a 260 year, 206 years ago today. French chemist and academic. Charles Friedrich Gerhardt, born on this date in 1816. And Nathaniel Everett Green, the English painter and astronomer, was born uh, 196 years ago today. Sure, you get the English one. <laughs> yeah. Fritz Freeling. What was he known for? Prince Freeling? Freeling? I don't know, Fing Longer? No, he was an animator, director, and producer. Oh. He did a lot of cartoons. Uh, he was born on the same date in 1906. 
and Ru Russian mathematicians and <laughs> mathematicians. <laughs> Russian physicist. It wouldn't be Technorama without a Russian physicist. <laughs> That's right. Physicist uh, Nikolai Bogolyubov. Sound it out. Born, <laughs> was born 110 years ago today. Bogolyubov. <laughs> Like a female Bugliosi. body part. He was, he yeah. was, he was the lawyer for Charles Manson. Also <laughs> born on the same date in 1938, American singer, songwriter, guitarist, and producer, and actor, Kenny Rogers, the gambler himself. Okay, and hum, hum, Hungarian American mathematician and computer scientist, Andre Semirdri. Born on this date in 1940. Also born on the same date in 1951, Chilean mathematician and computer scientist. Eric Goles. An English Canadian actress and physicist, Kim Cattrall, was born on the same date in 1956. Canadian actress, Carrie Ann Moss. <laughs> Trinity is 52 today. And Russian American computer scientist and businessman. Got to add that in there. I hope you can founder. get this one. It's Russian, but you can get this. You can get this. I'm sure you can. I think I can. I think I can. So bear with me. Co founded Google. Sergey Brin was born on this date in 1973. Awesome job. Let's do the birthdays real quick. 22nd has three birthdays. Zoidberg. What about Zoidberg? Kyle Slingo. Alchemy Dragon. 24th is Kira Fiore. Crazy Joe and Christine's daughter. 25th is Dave Grizzly Smith from Grizzly Growl's podcast. And Chuck's Forgotten iPod. It's not forgotten if it's on this list. Is on the 27th. That's the way it was on this day in Technorama history. For August 21st, 2019. If you want to get your birthday on there, if you're not on there, happy birthday to you anyway this week. If you want to get on that list, go over to chuckchat.com slash wiki, just like you see right there on the lit on the screen as we're waving at the screen. If you're in audio, chuckchat.com slash technorama. Just pretend we're waving at the screen. We'll, we'll get you there. <laughs> yeah. I gotta tell you something. We when I was in Wisconsin this past week on business, we had mm -hmm. our uh, Wisconsin ServiceNow user group snug meeting at Lambeau Field. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they took us on a tour. And we okay. stopped in one of the skyboxes where the alumni sit. And the guy's going through the history of the Green Bay Packers. And NFL was founded on this date. And Curly Lambeau, blah, blah, blah. And I piped up and I said, did you know today is also the anniversary of the NFL? Or the AFL, excuse me. The AFL was founded on this date. <laughs> my coworkers How turn around and that? go, how'd you know that? I said, I do a podcast. And the guy, the tour guide says, oh, yeah, what year? I'm like, 1959. <laughs> <laughs> he says, you do a football podcast? No, I do a tech nerd <laughs> podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know this anyway. That's pretty cool. So Did you have a good just, time there, by the way? What's hey, that? Did you have a good time there? I had a wonderful time. Got to see a lot of old coworkers, some friends, great customers, we took a tour of Lambeau Field. We had beer and brats, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Now you were in your own, you were in your old hometown, right? I was staying in Appleton, but the the thing was in Green Bay, so about thirty miles away. So I drove up for that, and then came back, and then visited with some old coworkers, and yeah. hung out on Thursday, and then came back Thursday night. So now was it was it strange going to your old hometown and staying in a hotel? Yes. <laughs> yes, it was. And renting a car. It's like, I'm driving around and this isn't my car. Right. Yeah. It's yeah, about as strange about as that. when we first got here and drove mm -hmm. the minivan around Phoenix and then continued to drive it to San Diego, which is someplace I never would have thought I'd be driving my own vehicle. Right. So I'm driving to service now in San Diego in my minivan. What? <laughs> yeah, when, I, when I saw you were going back to Appleton, I went... I wonder if that's weird going to your old hometown and staying in a hotel. It is. Yeah. I drove by the old homestead. It's changed a little bit in terms of landscaping. Obviously, the trees got bigger, but. Uh, Have you not learned anything from Lord of the Rings? You can't go home again. <laughs> well, I didn't throw anything in a volcano, if that's what you're asking. Hey, you should have gone and see if the keys still work on the door. Go. I don't have any of the old keys. Thank goodness. Open the door. But the garage hey, door was wide the, open. The, the garage door was wide open. <laughs> oh, you could have just walked in. Yeah. Probably. All right. Let us do the news. Good news, crybabies. <laughs> <laughs> Our first news story up is NASA is quite literally giving away an Apollo era Saturn rocket to anyone who can carry it out. Therein lies the crux of the 
Okay. Ever wanted to own a Saturn 1? This is not the Saturn 5 that went to the moon. It's one of the earlier models, Saturn 1. For anyone who needs to transport it, it can be yours. Live or work in one place for a long enough time, and you being the accumulated growing stockpile of, well, stuff. That's true for the average person's home, but it's equally true for organizations, even NASA. According to news site CNET.com, NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, MSFC, in Alabama has, quote, accessed a Saturn 1 Block 1 booster, which is part of the Saturn 1 Saturn rocket, and the space organization is looking to find a good home. Hmm. The booster itself is the bottommost stage of the Saturn 1 rocket. It's a beefy apparatus designed to power out of the Earth's atmosphere and the precursor to the Saturn V that was used for Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins' historic trip to the moon. The MSFC was a major player in the development of the Saturn I rockets in the 1960s. If you find yourself in the market for a rocket, which I'm sure many of us do, there are yeah. two things you should know about this one. The first is that it's in mint condition and has never been used. What? <laughs> Hey. If it had, it would be at the bottom of the ocean somewhere. Well, that makes That's sense, great. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and not available for interested parties. The second thing you should know, or should be aware of, is that it, even though NASA will, quote, rehome it for free, there's one catch. Whomever takes the rocket has to pay a whopping $250,000 cost to have it shipped. Well, that's not free. The cost for transporting the behemoth certainly puts most individuals out of the running to get it, but shouldn't be a problem for many museums and educational institutions. Donna, can we what? get the bottom part of a rocket? <laughs> Put it out in your yard. <laughs> Use it as a cell phone tower. I don't... Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Put a webcam Actually, on you know it and keep an eye on those neighbor's dogs. Isn't this like the beginning of the the pilot for the movie or the TV show uh, Salvage One with Andy Griffith? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see that one. You don't remember that one? Nope. They built a spaceship with garbage. You know, with like they, he ran a um, salvage yard and he was going to go to the moon. And his S's big thing was he was going to go to the moon and salvage the junk there that they left behind. This sounds like one of those stories we're going to have to follow up on find out who got you ever it. seen that show i'm no. so, it came on in 79 it had two seasons no <laughs> Andy Griffith. Come on. no all right <laughs> well then we'll hit up youtube later chuck all right because i need more content to consume yes you do <laughs> all right uh hey by you, the way you, i didn't say it was a great show i just <laughs> you and i are in tech industry jobs right i think so tell us does that affect many people Yes, it affects lots of people. I know so because I had a problem last week and I heard about it. <laughs> nice yes, segue. I a lot We're of... going to have to work on that one. Why don't you just read I, the next story? <laughs> I affect lots of people. So uh, does the tech industry job growth actually lower wages for some workers? Quite possibly. Um, a, new, a new study finds clear evidence that low-skilled workers fail to benefit from high-tech growth development writes a senior editor at The Atlantic. The UK-based study was co-authored by two researchers, one from the London School of Economics and the other from, a, from the Resolution Foundation in London. City Lab summarizes the results. High-tech growth leads to better jobs and higher wages for more skilled workers, but it leads to lower wages for less skilled workers. And the, the, the effects, these effects are compounded by housing costs with less skilled workers being even worse off than housing costs um, when they're taken into account. Indeed, the researchers see a negative and statistically significant impact from high-tech wages for workers in the third bottom of the education attainment. So this effect is even larger when local housing costs are included. I'd say any living expenses, probably just housing, but uh, which stands for, uh, in sharp contrast to the situation for higher skilled workers. This, their effective wages rise when controlling for housing costs. Hmm. Trying to figure out. Sounds like the, uh, sounds like the, the, the 
high tech stuff is driving a gap between skilled and unskilled workers. Have we seen what? this before? Mm, oh, I'm sure everywhere. But yeah. um, you know where I think this, where I think this, uh, really comes to mind is where people go through those boot camps and get certified really fast, mm -hmm. and then they go in thinking they're going to get a job doing what they, you know. You can be a sysadmin in two weeks, you know, going through our boot camp. Uh, especially when they were shoving people through Microsoft certifications early, especially in the early 2000s. I just couldn't believe the people that were showing up for interviews. And I was like, uh, this person still doesn't know how to run Notepad. You know, hey, I might, you might have something there, Craig. I think we could run a bunch of workshops and get people. Through ServiceNow work, uh, boot camps in about two weeks. You could have hey, a service. surprise. <laughs> we do. <laughs> no. But you know what I'm saying? I think that those kind of people suffer because they're not getting the higher paid jobs that they think they're going to be getting. They could have been focusing on something else or maybe their own skills. They're drawing, what is it? They're drawing tippy on the back of the matchbook cover. Clippy? <laughs> no. <laughs> The, the little turtle or the pirate, you might have a career in art oh, design. Oh, oh right. <laughs> oh, yeah, the little pamphlet. Try drawing one of these characters and see if you got the skills to do what we needed you to do. Anyway, I, I'm not a fan of those those kind of boot camps because, I mean, all they do is get you semi-familiar with, you know. Yeah. They get, they get you a, it's, a small... It, it's an introductory. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a small um, introduction to something that should, you should be, like, way out here. All right, let's way, take a way quick... out here. And by the way, if you're listening to audio, I'm separating my hands by at least 15 or 20 feet. Well, if you extend your hands all the way out, that's at least five feet. Let's take a quick break. We will be right back with the Hexes Dream Stories. Take a fast space trip through the cosmos with astronomy. Fraser of the Church Universe today, as we discuss not just what we know, but how we know. Topics range from dark matter to black photos in the planet. Get your episodes today at astronomycast.com or look for us in iTunes. You're listening to Tech the Road, Chuck and Craig. Hey, these guys make me feel like I'm flying with Superman. archives <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> like anybody remember karen from california i was hoping I brian would I'm, come over for that one i still wonder uh whatever <laughs> happened to her i hadn't heard from her in a long 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 time oh 12 years or more <laughs> it's yeah it's been a while we have a story from ars technica about a geeky license plate that earned a particular hacker a twelve thousand dollars in parking tickets somebody got reverse hacked <laughs> the relationship between americans and automobiles is a complicated one more than mere transport cars can become extensions of one personality one's personality think of Stereotypes about drivers of a particular model, like a Corvette, for instance. Since cars are mass-produced, it's natural that people want to personalize them. Sometimes it's covering them with every bit of chrome plastic you can find at J.C. Whitney. Sometimes it's plastering them with stickers, Marriott carpet. And sometimes <laughs> it might just be a personalized number plate. The rules for personalized plates vary depending on the states in which you are registered, and these can foster creativity. But today, we have a cautionary tale from California, which reveals the risks of being too creative. It's the story of a security researcher known as, well, we'll call him Droogie. <laughs> Droogie. Who presented Droogie his experience <laughs> at the recent DEF CON conference in Las Vegas. Droogie decided his new vanity plate should read NULL, N-U-L-L. -L. While he did this merely for giggles, he told the audience that there was an ulterior motive, as reported by Mashable. Quote, I was like, I'm the beep, he joked to the crowd. I'm going to be invisible instead. I got all the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> 
Droogie's hope was that the new plate mm, would more exploit more. California's DMV ticketing system in a similar manner to the classic XKD CD Bobby Tables. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Enter the I license love the Bobby plate. Tables. No. <laughs> With any luck, the DMV's ticket database would see null and consign any of his tickets to the void. Unfortunately, the exact opposite happened. First, Droogie got a parking ticket incurred for an actual parking infraction. So much for being invisible. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I feel like we need the uh, this music. <laughs> yeah. So much Excellent. for being invisible. Yeah. Then Would you like to be a, invisible? Get a vanity plate that says. Particular Semicolon. database of outstanding no. tickets has associated the license plate null with his address. It sent him every other ticket that lacked a real plate. <laughs> <laughs> that was you hilarious fool the, the total came to twelve thousand forty nine dollars worth of tickets <laughs> droogie uh, told the defcon audience that he had he received little sympathy from either the california dmv or the los angeles police department both telling him to just change his plate to something else that remains something he refused to do although the initial twelve thousand dollars worth of fines was removed the private company Company that administers the database didn't fix the issue <laughs> and new null tickets are uh, still showing up <laughs> oh man that's hilarious i read this and i thought this is perfect you you go hey i'm gonna be cool and everything and then oops i'll avoid all the tickets and no you get all the default tickets <laughs> yep that's funny <laughs> that is awesome all right so much for that oh we forgot that was part of our Hacks and Strange Stories. Yeah, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Let's see who's on Facebook tonight as we do this on 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook. We have, who's joined us? Michael King, John Miller Jr., you and me, and Scott Tyler. I see, oh, there were some other, Elton Chapman. And... That's all I'm seeing at the moment, but there are others that were named in there. Do you see anybody else making comments or nope. on your green pill list? Nope, that's it. Okay. So. Yep. I don't know how, I don't know how Facebook shows these people to us, but. Magic. Yeah. <laughs> then, and magic and, you know, and database insertions. That means it is time for Remember When. I just Yay. wanted to play that music. So, tell us, Craig, do you remember AOL? Yes. What do you remember of. about AOL the most? I remember being frustrated when other people were using it, and they say, "How do I do this?" And I'm looking at this portal. Um, it was. I remember all bad. the floppies and CDs you got. I had a, yeah. a box load of those, thinking, "Oh, this would be a novel collection." Nah, yeah. it just turned into a novel junk pile, and eventually yeah. I pitched them all. Paperweight. It was to see how old of a version you could get. It's like, here's one mm -hmm. that has one free hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's funny is I, I ran an internet service back in the late 90s, right in 2000, and there was uh, a lot of people that came in still using AOL, and I had to uh, change their browser because their browser came up and it had it was the AOL branding, and yep. you know, you try to walk somebody on the phone, I right, click on mail, but it says like AOL mail or something, they get all confused. Anyway, so AOL, this is how AOL dominated the internet of the 90s. Let it slip away. Mm, I have a feeling these, there's parallels between this and uh, Netware. <laughs> no. um, at its peak, AOL had a, a market capitalization of more than 200 billion, dominating email, internet connectivity, online news, and chat. Yeah, chat will actually, they did a good job with that because that hung around for a long time. Yes, it did. Only recently yeah. being dismissed. Yeah. Um, but AOL couldn't maintain its superior position as a subscription and advertising revenue dried up with the shift from dial-up modems to cable broadband. Well, not only that, but the dot-com bubble took away a lot of their advertising. They made a lot of their mm -hmm. revenue, much like websites do today, on ad space. And yeah. with the dot-com burst, a lot of those venture capitalists and, and the companies went away, so so did a lot of their revenue. So that was... That was strike one was, you know, in that 2000, 2001, 2002 era. And yeah. then, and go ahead. Well, and, and then, um, then there was the merger with Time Warner in 2000. Yep. Uh, was, and which came apart in 2009. 
uh, or they unwound it rather, uh, along the way AOL tried, but failed to buy Facebook, YouTube, and the majority, majority, excuse me, minority stake in Chinese internet company, uh, Tencent. I'm not familiar with Tencent. Uh, eventually AOL sold to Verizon in 2015 for 4.4 billion where Verizon now owns Yahoo. <laughs> so they got yes. two. Yes. And they, they go old... watch the video. It's, it's really interesting. It's like 13 minutes documentary We're talking with AOL CEOs from the past and present. The, the, sell to Verizon, the creation of Oath, and then that turned into, what is it, Verizon Media or something like that. So it's pretty mm-hmm. much been eroded away in the sands of corporate mergers and acquisitions. But, yeah. yep, it I can, was... I it can was, tell you the shift from dial-up to cable had a lot of impact on not just them. Well, they I think they that was their big thing was people still use dial-up for AOL, but um, even my ISP... Uh, I had modems and people were dialing in. And then when there were, when the shift started to go to cable broadband, I knew it was coming where well, DSL, especially at the beginning DSL and cable broadband, I saw it coming. And my partner at the time was like, no, we're just sticking with what we got. And he wanted to stick with dial up. And I was like, it's not going to last forever. No, it's not. And so I saw the writing on the wall, but, and, and you know, I was the Nostradamus in that story and I was right. You want to watch an interesting show. I'm looking for it on IMDb. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, I think I've mentioned this before. A show called Halt and Catch Fire. Yes. Yeah, I've watched it. Yeah. Lee Pace is in there, you know, from Ronan from Guardians and and uh, the uh, fun show. It, it takes you back to those early days. It's, it is it is fictitious, but it has interesting things about banks of dial-up modems and <laughs> yeah they do a good job of playing off on all those uh, touch points in his uh, tech yep. history yep. you know uh, from computers to everything yeah so it was really good speaking of which before we go uh, we didn't have a media corner tonight but i did what i promised when i was on the plane wait a minute we got one more remember when i got i well real quick i watched endgame oh. and captain marvel on this latest trip so oh you did watch endgame finally yes. and what'd you think you built it up too much. What? <laughs> I did not. That was the I didn't. Disney did. Marvel did. No, was, it was a good movie. Was, it was a good. I movie. was invested. You, you said it was too much. It, I, it was. It was a bit long. It know, was three hours. Well, they I, had a lot. They I didn't have a lot Phoenix, to wrap and up. it wasn't even done by the time I got to Minneapolis. <laughs> I had to come mm. back and finish it on Thursday. Well, they did have a lot to wrap up in it. So yeah, it could have been cut a little bit maybe a hair i don't know but i think they wrapped up everything pretty well they did they did it was it was a nice ending with all the signatures and whatnot um let's see and i'm never gonna look at cats the same way again after watching captain marvel (laughs) (laughs) oh that's right yeah the flurkin and you know what i've got I, i could probably find plenty of those around my house (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> all right another uh, cube we have uh. we have a story from vice.com which is another short video this one much shorter but it, it was a question about what was the what was the very first thing securely sold on the internet and they say they started by going well you got to go way back before the internet they did make it one wasn't misquote bitcoin. they did it wasn't they, bitcoin they did say uh tim berners lee law you know invented the internet it's like no he didn't I think it was just a slip up saying World Wide Web. Oh, but, uh, yeah, right. I was watching closely going, did they just say what I think they said? Rewind. Yes, they did. Well, mm-hmm. it's wrong. But uh, they they do a nice little history about where were transactions. Uh, if you go back to the ARPANET, there was a student in Stanford who bought a bag of weed from a student in MIT. <laughs> but it wasn't so much a transaction that you think of today with a shopping cart and a checkout. It was it was more of a chat conversation. Hey, man, send I'll meet you in the meat. parking lot and give you money. And then uh, 1984, they had this thing in Britain. Uh, what was it called? Televid or Vid, Vid, Videx or something where mm-hmm. it was a... Uh, an 84 year old grandmother bought groceries from her local grocer uh, just by saying, I want to buy this, this, and this. And the transaction took place. But the secure transaction, you may hear the urban legend that it was a pizza bought from Pizza Hut. Not true. So I encourage you to go through and watch the video. Very entertaining, very inf- 
informative, if, assuming their journalism skills are correct, aside from Tim Berners-Lee inventing the internet. Everybody knows that was Al Gore. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, of course. Everybody knows that. Follow that in our show notes. Go to chuckchat.com slash technorama. Go to episode 574 and you will find it there. There. The Al Gore invented IPv3. <laughs> <laughs> IPv3. It had eight bits. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Good for 255 devices on the whole internet. <laughs> we'll never need more than that. Yeah. Or 640K. Oh, 254, because zero is the network and ah, true. FF yeah. is the subnet mask. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, we want to give our thank you to our patrons. You guys deserve our undying praise. You keep the show going, as you may have heard when we first started recording, that uh, there are bills to be paid on a monthly basis, and your contributions help offset that tremendously. So as part of our undying gratitude, we give you a shout-out in each show and special content available only to you. You can't tell the others what it is. It's a secret handshake you need to know to get into the Patreon site. Well, actually, it's your login and password. So, thank you to Kyle Nishioka, Abner Braverman, Ben Vaughn, Mike Wills, Megapodtastic, Night Gig Studios, Gary Lindros, John Clifford, Leon. All right, that you're funny man. He he reversed it. Now it's Elbon Naj. <laughs> that or, Elbon Naj? <laughs> that Elbon Naj. Chris MC, Alexis Duran. You shouldn't have left your pink cursor there, buddy. <laughs> Saturday Morning Media, Steve Therian, Jorga Schrawin, John Miller Jr., Amber Elstad, Harold McKinstry, Amy Bowen. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Denise Inglis, Steve Weshi, Dean Jensen. Oh, Dan, wait a minute. What? Weshi? That Weshi. Dan DeMann, right. NCAF1, and our newest Patreon member, Matt Baum. I think he snuck in on us a week or so ago. We forgot to mention him, but thank you anyway. And it has now disrupted the symmetry of the four columns. We now have uh, three empty spaces to drive Craig absolutely nuts. This will not stand. This, this indiscretion. That's our only sales pitch we have is help disbalance the, the table to mess up Craig. Right. If you want to be a Patreon member, the address is on the screen right now. Patreon.com slash Technorama Podcast. If you're listening at home, let me say it again patreon.com slash technorama podcast for as little as a dollar a show you can help keep the show running and you know it's valuable for you now no you can't do that craig he just copy and pasted matt bomb three you more said times we missed him a couple weeks so i'm just making up for it oh okay now he owes us eight bucks <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh if that if that's, that's the way it works, works. I'll, I'll make up a couple more rows <laughs> <laughs> we'll just keep reading them on and on and on for the rest of the night bomb. thank you bomb. very much everybody bomb as well. my favorite part of the show is the reading of the patrons <clears throat> last story we have is in the geek library which we have there it is do you have a problem with your children with too much internet getting stuck online and just generally avoiding social encounters in the real world? Well, South Korea has a solution for you. Tell them, Craig. Just, just turn off the internet. Just turn it off. No, that's not it. No. So South Korea is one of the most wired countries in the world, but that level of connectivity is a double-edged sword in society that some experts say is becoming increasingly addicting or addicted to the internet, where 95% of the adults own a smartphone. I wonder what the ratio is in the U.S., but, or the um, percentage. Anyway, uh, Korea has an environment that allows easy access to computer games and other activities online. Don't we all? It's called the Internet. But, but Sung Wan Ro, a physicist, psychiatrist, excuse me, in Seoul's Hanyang University, uh, who studies Internet addiction, says you can, you can connect to your smartphone anywhere. Every neighborhood has what is called a PC bang or an English PC cafe or an English. Okay. A PC bang is a, like a PC cafe. All right. That's what they call here it in all, Korea. Okay. So PC bang. All, yeah. And here all Korean our Koreans of all ages can access the internet very easily. And those PC bangs are often shiny places with big comfy chairs, huge screens and fast internet. 
hey, let's go. <laughs> I'm in <laughs> for all the for all for about a dollar an hour. Okay, most are up in 24 hours a day, so it's no wonder some customers stay there, uh, overstay their welcome. It's I've seen a lot of customers come in here late in the afternoon and leave the next morning. Oh, That's pretty common. Uh, says Lee K. Seong, uh, the owner of Oz PC Bang. <laughs> I just like saying that PC Bang in Seoul's upmarket. It might be Gang Bong. I don't know. Huh? It might be Bong. Bong. Okay. Well, PC Bong. Um, some, he says, stay a day or two and others become, well, ripe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. I'm a customer. You may just sit down in this long. nice comfy chair. And you got a nice yeah. fast PC like, what? Oh, dude. Seriously. Somebody's in that nice comfy chair. Okay, I got to get up. Anyway, so some customers uh, stay too long. Uh, and I'm sorry to say they get smelly. Uh, other customers start to complain. We have to ask them to leave. Is it like the gym uh, where you have to wipe down your chair when you're done? Yeah. So they go on and talk about it. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I didn't realize that th and now a dollar an hour. I mean we don't really have internet cafes anymore. I guess a Starbucks mm -hmm. is probably that kind of thing. Right. <clears throat> well, the other part they go into is, uh, they've got an addiction treatment program. There's mm -hmm. the national center for youth internet addiction treatment. And they run that out of Seoul. There's lots of pictures about you know, the kids getting back into real social experiment. Speaking almost in a whisper, 16-year-old girl says her time at the center has been a painful experience. The center requests NPR not to use the names or show the faces of the pe young people receiving treatment for their privacy reasons. She recalls fe feeling nervous when she first handed over her phone. I had my phone since my first year in elementary school. I've never been without it since, so I was worried. Wow. <laughs> this is a worried. real thing. Another girl who's 14 is still struggling. My hand gets shaky. I can't concentrate, she says. When I go back to the dormitory to get some rest, I keep thinking of Facebook. There are hearts there that I can collect from a game, but they'll go away if I don't take them up in three days. That worries me. Wow. Would you say that you, I don't know, you probably don't have all those symptoms, but do you feel addicted to, to the internet? Although I feel well, that there are, kinda... there are times where my time could be better spent not doing something on the computer, mm -hmm. if that's what you mean. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, obviously my work is on the internet uh, by default because I work remotely. Right. Um, and sometimes that bleeds and into the personal life too. It's like, it hey, does. I'm having so much fun and I'm writing this new personal project and mm -hmm. dang, I just spent all Saturday instead of doing something with real people. <laughs> well, I will say this. There was a couple of times. All right. So Elton Chapman's, uh, he's into scouts, uh, scouting like I am. And we're actually working on the same course that's coming up. It's a leadership course. And so I was there Friday night, um, into Saturday afternoon and where we were at the campsite, they have no internet. I mean, the, I mean, literally I pulled out my phone and there's the no sign. Nice. You know, where, where, so I was like, okay, that's fine. And I didn't really feel, I didn't feel jittery or feel like I was out of touch. Actually, I was welcoming, not getting new messages um, for a while. The only, the only problem I had was there was a couple of times I'm working as a scribe in the, in the whole course with another guy and uh, another lady. And there was a couple of times was like, I wanted to say, Hey, just go pull it off the internet, you know, but Hey, wait a minute. I just had to rethink that. But I don't know if that's really addiction, more or less using it as a resource, but still I, I didn't feel like I was shaky or I was missing Facebook or anything like that. I no, just was... we've, and, and we've gone on cruises before where there's, yeah. we've, we've elected not to buy the internet package. Like, hey, you know what? What happens, happens. Now, when yeah. you make landfall on an island, you can check in real quick and clean out the inbox so you don't get deluged when you get home. But yeah. uh, you know, well, that's... And on our cruise, the only, the only reason I, I got the... Oh, social internet package is not to check fake Facebook because I didn't have it on my phone. It was so we can text our son and see how thing make sure everything is all right. Yes, the house. and that's a legitimate excuse. I mean, yeah, no other than reason. that, um, <laughs> I wasn't. I, I, I didn't look at Facebook. I didn't use it at all. You know, so yeah. I don't know. I don't feel addicted to it so much as, like you said, there are times I go, 
I need to walk away from this for a little yeah, while or there's some, I should be doing something else. Not an addiction so much as I feel very dependent and there are times when the dependency gets to be a little more than I mm -hmm. care for. Yeah. So, and that's healthy, I think. As long as you recognize it and you do yes. something about it. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, there's been times I've had some time to drink and I'm like, okay, I've just had enough. As long as I identify and go, okay, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I don't need any more. I'm fine, but you Tell know, Dragon start, Con. Yeah, Dragon Con. Well, that's just a weekend, a long, a weekend. long weekend. Which reminds <laughs> me, we will be at Dragon Con arriving on Wednesday this year. Hope to yeah. see you there. We've got our Tectorama comedy forecast combined show. Uh, are we within that ten day window yet? We're pretty darn close, aren't we? Um, let's see. It will be. Check yeah. the schedule. I'm listed as a. Attending professional. So if you look for my name, you'll know where we are. Oh, so when this when this show goes out, it'll yes, be within we will that be window. But we out. haven't received confirmation. So anything could happen as we record this, but in all likelihood, we have our, our Technorama comedy forecast show. Um I guess we could do the schedule for them next week. But uh, again, hey, if, hey, if you, you know what? I schedule, think if it's important, if you're going to Dragon Con and you want to catch up with us, check our Twitter or Facebook page. And we will definitely keep you updated. I don't know if we can update you through the podcast quick enough, but we can certainly do that through the Facebook. We'll and the be Twitter doing Technorama. Page. We will be doing the Topic is Trek. And I've got another yes. panel following the Technorama comedy forecast called, So, you want to start a podcast? I don't know what I'm <laughs> going to talk about. That's a comedy about. podcast in itself. I have no idea what I'm going to be talking about. I think I'm just there for the color commentary. You should do it. You should, it should be called, You Shouldn't Start a Podcast. We'll just... <laughs> Yeah, don't you waste your time <laughs> that brings us to the end of the show as Donna flashes the null license plate one more time on the screen <laughs> oh is she telling you move along move along <laughs> question of the week this week is what's a statistic that blew your mind uh, how many hmm. germs are on your keyboard <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> Or your how many phone. people have a quick question? <laughs> how many? How many questions? How many people respond to the Technorama question? That's amazing. How many people? Yeah. All right. What is a statistic that blew your mind? Is our question. We'll put that on social media next week and get that on episode five seven five. We're approaching six hundred, Craig. What? I'm forecasting oh, yeah, sure that are. will happen. Oh, probably Q two <laughs> next year. Maybe maybe early Q three. Not sure. Hmm. Next year? Yeah. 20, It'll okay. probably be it, maybe late Q1. Late Q1. Well, if we do Q2. a podcast a day. No, uh, a podcast a day. <laughs> we'll have it inside a month. Oh, by the way, we are doing a podcast today. Oh, yes. Dog Days of Podcasting. Dogdaysofpodcasting.com. Yeah. There you are. You can go over there, and there are podcasters that are doing a podcast a day, which Craig and I will be recording mine shortly after the show. So, ha -ha, right. go listen. And that comes up on its own entirety feed. You can get the master feed and listen to all those shows going all the way back to August 1st of this year. So that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you, sir. It's been fun hanging it's out been, once it again. It has been fun. Thank you. We'll be hanging out practically nonstop in about a week and a half. Looking forward to it. All right. Bracing myself. <laughs> yeah i gotta can't get in a hangar hangover mode something yeah if you want to get in touch with us you can call us on the listener line 707-530-2428 that's 707-530-chat we'd love to hear from you or send us an email technorama at chuckchat.com you can find all this information and more on our website at chuckchat.com slash technorama we'd love to see you there and tell us tell someone you know about the show it's been a while yeah. right it has been a while. We need another listener. Tell a friend. We need that Patreon table to just oh, unbalance and come unhinged. Till yeah. next time. Craig, give me a binary high five. All right. One, zero, one. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Recording stopped. We are going to stop the broadcast. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Donna, for handling the video expertly once again. And with that, take care, everybody. Have a good week. All right. Bye. Bye, y'all.